Hey everyone, it's yours truly, Dr. Alana DeGrasa. How are you doing today? Welcome to Friday. Can you believe it? You made it to another week. So much to talk about this week. Wow. I have to say this whole topic about our special word, hashtag procrastination, has been wonderful, not only to talk about this, but to also apply a lot of what I spoke with you guys about into my own life and to also think about this on a deeper, deeper level. So I want to just touch base with you today. We're going live today, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We live stream right here in our channel, and I want to say thank you so much for being a part of it. I also want to make sure to say shout out to everybody who supports me, the Dr. Alana DeGrasse tribe. Thank you so much for everything that you do when it comes to sharing your journey, sharing photos, sharing images, supporting one another, because that is truly what counts and that's what makes everyone smile, right? I mean, don't you like waking up in the morning and seeing a quote that says you are beautiful and valuable and nothing about you is a mistake, two snaps. So I wanna thank you and welcome you. And if you've never watched any of my live streams before, I wanna personally say, Welcome to this live stream. And as your host, my name is Dr. Alana DeGrasse. And what I love to do is I love to help individuals reach their personal and professional goals. And I do that through coaching, through trainings, through seminars, through video, and really by any creative means, because thousands of individuals, especially I was looking at some statistics the other day, 19 million individuals right, feel at, have felt some levels of depression at some point or some stage in their lives. And I want to encourage all of us to look at what are some of the reasons we feel, you know, lethargic when it comes to reaching goals. What are some of the reasons we throw in the towel and quit and we say, you know what, forget it. I'm not going to focus anymore on this or I started in this pathway and then something happened, I diverted, and now I'm not even close to where I had thought I would have been this time. So a lot of us have different goals that we are trying to reach. A lot of us have started on journeys, and sometimes we lose our steam. And, you know, I understand it because a lot of times when we are stepping out to do something new or even if we've been doing it for some time and perhaps we don't feel like we have gotten to where we would like to be yet, we assume that it is not working. And I want to let you know that's absolutely farther from the truth. Just like I've been saying, you know, when we're trying to transform into being these, this new individual when we're trying to transform ourselves or transform our lives, it takes a process. It's not just going to happen overnight, especially if you're trying to change behaviors that you have been doing for years. You know, you, you know let's say you've been doing something for 15, 20 years. You were an emotional eater for 15 to 20 years. You know, when you went through life's journey, when things got tough, you would just, you know, go in on something sweet or not eat healthy or whatever. And, you know, you wake up one day and you say, okay, that's it. I'm not going to do it anymore. Well, you have created a pattern of behavior that um, basically aligns with what you have told yourself is acceptable. So in order to get out of that, it's a day by day process. And that's one of the reasons why I have decided that Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you are going to have either a video or a live stream with me, yours truly, that's going to help you to get clearer around where you can go, what you can do, the steps that it's going to take to get you there. And guess what? Even if you fall off, even if you said, oh my gosh, I always start things and I never finish them, hang in there. Even if you're doing this for the very first time, hang in there. Now, one of the things we are going to be doing as the months progress is we're going to be updating our group because we want our group to be as authentic and as engaging as possible. So we're going to be looking at individuals who um, may not have been as engaging. And so we're also going to be asking you 
if you still intend on engaging with us in the tribe. And you know, this tribe is not for everyone, so I absolutely get it if it's not a fit for you. But if you are someone who says, oh my gosh, I'm in the midst of transition, I'm ready to go and grow this year, I wanna do something new, and that's you, then make sure to let us know between now and 10 days from now that you intend on staying in the IWBCC tribe because we would love to have you. We would love to invite you to be a part of all of the wonderful live events and offline events that we have. So I wanna encourage you to stay active. You know, a lot of us, when we are going through a really difficult time, we can say to ourselves, you know what, I'm going through a difficult time. So therefore, I'm going to shut down completely. Or when I get everything ready, then I'll start X, Y, and Z. And a lot of times when I'm talking to people about planning and strategizing, they'll say, oh, everything you're saying is perfectly wonderful. But when everything is perfect, then I'll get back to you. And that's a big subconscious uh, variable of procrastination because we keep telling ourselves, I am not ready. And I mean, there are some times when you really know, okay, I'm not ready to do something. Uh, but there are other times where it's just a matter of you saying, okay, it's a matter of me feeling a little fearful. And a lot of us at times have to deal with fear. What What is fear of the unknown? It's not knowing what to expect. It's not knowing if you sign up to do something, if it's going to be worth your while, or if it's not going to be worth your while. So a lot of times, when we hesitate, when we postpone, it's not always because we don't want to take action. It's because we're actually analyzing, do I think I can actually do this given thing? And do I believe that this given thing is going to help me to move forward? That's what we really want to know. So when we think about this, you know, I really want to ask you a question today, and that is, what are some of the things you have taken away from our topic around procrastination? I mean, would you call yourself a procrastinator? Would you say that you're someone who has a lot of skill, a lot of talent, you're so smart, and yet you put off doing the very things that you know you can do that will catapult you to the next level? A lot of individuals talk about that. A lot of clients I have, when we talk about resentment and we talk about throwing in the towel and quitting, one of the worst resentments, I call it the worst pill that you could ever swallow, is the pill of resentment. Because what happens is that we have a goal and we say, oh, I'm going to do this goal. And the things that I need to do to get to that goal, I'll start doing that tomorrow. Yeah, I want to write my book. <clears throat> but I'll start doing that tomorrow. I want to have stronger relationships, but I'll call up some friends tomorrow. I need to end some relationships, but I'm gonna stay comfortable where I'm at. See, comfort, we all crave comfort because it feels comfortable, right? I love apple pie heated up in the microwave with a little bit of ice cream because that tastes so yummy and it's great. But you know what, I can't have that every single day. I can't eat it every hour, right? So I have to have some level of boundary. And when you think about that, you really have to come to a place where you say, okay, you know what? I am going to take this goal that I would like, and I am going to do everything I can to make sure that that goal actually happens. I'm going to set myself up to ensure that I can actually get the tools I need to be successful. So let's talk about this because if you don't actually set yourself up to be successful, then you're on what I call the hashtag CMF plan, cross my fingers. And cross my fingers plans don't always work. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But there are really some ingredients that will help you to do what I call upgrade. And one of them is consistency. So one of the goals we had started last week um, was to ask you to pick one habit that you could do every day for the week that will align towards your goals. For example, if you said, oh my gosh, I've always wanted to have a, a, a baking business. I know how to bake cakes. I know how to throw down or whatever it is. I always wanted to have my own catering business. 
but you kept telling yourself, oh, I have to wait until I put a business plan together and I can't start anything and I can't, well, there's nothing that stops you from baking the cake and going to the local, you know, resource centers and selling it for, you know, a dollar a pop or baking, uh, you know, making dinners out of your home and offering it to college students who are hungry, right? Um, $10 a plate, I don't know, but there are a lot of things that we can do right now just to either generate income to get to a financial goal. There are a lot of things we can do right now to find happiness, contentment, you know? So there are a lot of things that you can do starting today that can align with where you would like to be in the future. So true change, it's not gonna happen overnight. Just like I said before, it's just like getting on a bike with training wheels and riding on that bike and saying, I'm committed, I'm committed, falling off, getting back on the bike, saying, I'm committed, I'm committed. And that's what true change and transformation process is. It's getting on the bike and falling off, getting on the bike and falling off. So I don't care if there's no one around you that understands or believes that your change is possible. I want you to know, hey, I believe in me. (laughs) Can you say that? I believe in me. I believe that I can show up even if no one else shows up. I'm going to show up for me. I'm going to do something different. That's where the process of change happens. It's in the day-to-day. It's in the routine. It's in the consistency. And CMF plans don't always work. They do at times, but sometimes they don't. So today, you know, I want to read to you guys this poem from my book, Chronicles of a Poet. And it's called For All the I Don'ts. I don't have the money. How many of us have said, oh, I don't have the money. I just can't get going. My assignment still stands. I don't have the resources. My creator will make provision for me. I mean, I've never gone to the ocean and seen the ocean run dry. Now we do have evaporation, but we have an abundance of nature, an abundance of resources all around us. I love how Susie Carter says, wealth is all around me. I absolutely do believe that. Um, I don't have tomorrow. We always say, I'll get to writing that book tomorrow. But tomorrow, you might as well start doing that today. I don't have the sideline encouragers, so I don't have a lot of people around me. But guess what? You could start doing something different today. My angels are my staff. I don't fear when I know I can stand beyond the extreme. So, you know, I want to encourage you to remember you can start today to do something different. And I want some of you who are probably going to watch this later, I want some of you to tune in and learn about how you can join our coaching process, how you can be a part of Business Communication Mastery, how you can be a part of the Women Build Confidence Coaching Group. You know what? There's so much in store for you, but the question is, are you ready to take action? Now, I want to share with you, yesterday, I'm sorry, on Monday, I shared with you guys how, you know, when I first began, I had to just believe that I would find the places and the spaces where I could share my gift to encourage and motivate individuals to reach their personal and professional goals. And, you know, today I want to share with you the story of persistence. So when I first started doing my doctoral program, you know, it was a lot of research, a lot of work. I would lock myself in the basement. Hupster would come down and provide me with lunch and breakfast and dinner at times. So supportive. So shout outs to the Hupster. And um, and I just remember working diligently and I was spending all this time writing and researching. And basically, you know, it was at this point in my research where I had to submit my work. And I was super excited because this meant that once I turned this work in, that it would catapult me towards the next phase of my doctoral journey. Well, I presented what I had done to my advisor. And at the time she said, Alana, there's nothing new in your research. I want you to start over now. We're talking about at least a year and a half of research, writing, you know, editing, looking at the numbers, looking at what caused people to persist. 
And um, I couldn't believe it. I said, so you want me to literally start from scratch or do you just want me to revise what I have? And she said, I want you to start from scratch. So can you imagine writing for a year to a year and a half, only looking forward to getting to this new phase in your program, only to be told, nope, scratch, we're going to start from zero. Yeah, I remember that. And it was very, very moving because I just couldn't believe that I had to start from scratch again. I literally had to wipe the slate clean as if I hadn't done any research and I had to start over. That, mean, that meant researching new topics. That meant reading and looking at the literature. That meant getting all in there. And I remember the sense of disappointment that I had. I remember the sense of just the loathing, overwhelming feeling that I was never going to get to the goal of graduation. And sometimes when we are going through some tough times, we think that heavy feeling that we have is going to happen all the time. But I want to encourage you if you see me, that is not the case. I did eventually graduate. I did eventually, you know, get to that new level, but it took some time and strategy to figure out how can I go from being stuck to being uh, progressive. Well, I made a lot of choices. I looked at my calendar. I said, okay, what is it going to take for me to actually take where I'm at, I'm stuck, and actually unravel this? Not only that, but I had to have a number of coaches. I had to then commit myself to that process and to their wisdom. It's a lot of, it's very interesting when people tell me they want to get to another place in their life. And yet when you are standing in front of them, offering them some tools and tips, sometimes they may actually halt or stop because they're still scared to take a step to do something new. That's why I want to say thank you to everyone who is a part of our learning communities, like everyone in the Business Communication Mastery Program, everyone who's in the Women Build Confidence Program, everyone who's attended womanpreneur events and live events and have done things with Turning on the Lights Global Institute. That's an example of taking steps towards reaching your goals. It's not always going to be comfortable. You're not always going to feel like getting up and doing what you need to do, but you get up and you do it because you're committed. You understand that you're trying to get to a new level in your life. Well, I have two more comments to leave with you guys today. So remember, you don't have to stay stuck. You can decide today to do something different. I want to see your comments. I want to see your photos. I want to see you making changes. And guess what? We have a lot of new things coming in the new year. So you want to stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to DrAlanaDeGrasso.com. That's it for me, guys. You guys take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.